In this video, we're going to continue to look at tests and quizzes and how to publish the tests and quizzes. So, so far I have working copies of three different quizzes. And if I go to published copies, you can see that this is blank. In fact, if I go to the access or student view, you can see that none of these have been published, so the students can't access them yet. To the left of each of the quizzes, there's a select action, and I need to go to settings in order to set up the publish settings for each of these quizzes. I'm just going to go over the ones I think are most important. There are a lot of settings in here, and you can look at them all quickly by hitting open and close them back by hitting close. The first one we need to look at is the delivery dates. There are three dates. The first one is when it's available for the students to actually see that there is a quiz to take. And I like to set this early so that students can see all the quizzes that are associated with the class, but this is up to you. You could limit this if you want. The due date, obviously this is going to coincide with what's on your syllabus, and I'm just going to pick a date in the future. I'll also want to set the time for whatever I have on my syllabus. So if I have to do it by midnight, uh, 11.59 p.m. The retract date, um, you can set if you want. Uh, after the retract date, the students will no longer see the link in their list. So I like to set mine actually at the very end of the semester just in case someone has a legitimate excuse on why they couldn't take uh, the quiz. Plus, once they've taken it, it will be removed from their list if you have selected to only allow for one submission, which is standard. So um, it's up to you. If you want to be very strict, you could set the retract date and the due date to be the same. The next area that I want to look at is the timed assessment. Um, I highly recommend that you time all of your assessments and it's up to you to determine how long you think they should have to take a particular assessment. I gave 15 minutes to this one because it's just a short quiz. Assessment organization is the next item, and this is how they can access the individual questions. So linear access is the default, so this is no return to previous pages. So you answer the first question, it goes to the next question, but you can't go back. If you would like them to be able to go back and forth between questions, choose the random access to questions from a table of contents, then they can go back and forth. Okay, I'm going to leave that as linear. When I did that, the question layout automatically defaults to each question is on a separate web page. And, and this is preferred from OIRT. They have had problems with the last option where all of the questions are on one long web page. Somehow that doesn't work as well as listing them on a separate web page. So I recommend the first one. And numbering, um, this is if you have multiple parts, there's um, different options on how you want those to be numbered. The next item is submissions. Um, the default is one submission, which I think is standard for most tests and quizzes. If it, they're practice tests and quizzes, you could um, choose unlimited. There's also late handling. So if someone is late taking a quiz, you can say that they will not be accepted after the due date, just cut them off. Or you can go ahead and accept them and they will be marked as late and you can mark them down accordingly. The next area I wanna look at is feedback. And this is up to you on whether you want to give them feedback or not about their questions. When we built our quizzes, some of them had um, selection level feedback, some of them had question level, so if you have more information to give the students about each of the questions and why they got it right or wrong, you need to choose what level you want to give them feedback on. For the feedback delivery, I would not choose immediate feedback because especially if they can go back and forth, everyone could make an A because you would know immediately if you got something right or wrong. Feedback on submission is also dangerous because someone could record which ones they got right and wrong and pass that on to a friend. You can elect to just give them no feedback, or you can release feedback to the whole class after the due date has passed. And that's kind of what I like to do. Give them feedback, but wait until everybody's taken the quiz. And then you can choose what you want to release. So you can allow them to see their response, the correct response, maybe some greater com the graders' comments and maybe some statistics. It's up to you what, what kind of feedback you want to give them. 
And the last part we need to look at is the grading. If you want the grade sent to the grade book, then you need to check this. They will automatically go into the grade book, and we'll look at that in a little bit to see how you set up quizzes in the grade book. So when you're finished, you can just save these settings if you're not ready to publish, but I'm ready to publish. So I'm going to hit Save Settings and Publish. And there are some options here. The first one is that this note will be sent to everybody. And I don't want to do that right now because I'm getting this set up ahead of time. So I'm going to say without notification. I'm going to look over this and it looks right, so I'm going to hit publish. Now under published copies here, you can see that quiz one is now active because the start date was set in the past. And if I go to the student or access view, you can see that quiz one is under the um, available assessments. So now I could go back and for each of these go to the settings and go through each of those items and publish all of my quizzes. I want to look at the gradebook and explain how quizzes come into the gradebook. It's a little confusing because it works differently than some of the other tools in Sakai. For instance, with the assignments tool, you can create an assignment and have it be sent to the gradebook, or you could create an assignment in the gradebook, and then when you create your assignment, say, I want to link these two items together. Unfortunately, the tests and quizzes module does not work like that. You cannot create a quiz ahead of time and then associate it. So don't create any quizzes in your gradebook. You have to let them come in this way. So I have published my three quizzes and they've come into the gradebook. And if I double click on one, um, you can see that the source is tests and quizzes. But now they're not in the right spot. So once the quizzes come in, then I can assign them to one of the categories that I have already created. So now the quiz is under the quizzes, which has rules assigned to it on how much they count. So for each of these quizzes, I have to assign it to the quiz category. I'm going to make sure that it's included in grade and that the scores are released to the students and do this for each one of them. So for this particular grade book, what I said is that each of these are going to be weighted equally. So you can see that it automatically does the math. So for each of these quizzes, it's going to count the same percentage, and it's going to count for 50% of the grade in this particular class. So again, it's you have to let the quizzes come in from tests and quizzes and then put them into the right categories. If you try to do a new item and call it like quiz four, and then I create a quiz four, they will conflict and the grades will not come into the grade book from tests and quizzes because there's a conflict, but it doesn't tell you that. It's really confusing. So again, let them come in on their own.